right, welcome, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls of the broadcast here. This is a cast me coming at you, and I'm Breaking CBK. Looking forward to having some fun with this one. Uh, for those that may not know what cast me is, essentially it's a service that I provide. Uh, I'll cast uh, one of your select matches. Uh, in this case, being a Dota 2 game, and looking forward to having fun with this one. So uh, this is a one that was submitted to myself here. So we're gonna. Go ahead and uh, get a get a cast me done with it. Looking forward to a fun one here. Uh, let's go over the lineups on either side. Always intriguing to do. The names can definitely be entertaining. No different here. Uh, we live baby on the Nature's Prophet. Actually, not a hero we get to see too often. So excited to see the Nature's Prophet here and how it does. Uh, we have Salt Golem playing the Doom. That's fun to see. Doom is an entertaining hero. Um, and one that's kind of picked up a little bit of steam as of late, in, at least on the competitive side of things. So we'll see what he does. Enigma being played by Yules to Live. Yules to Live. Interesting. Um, he's playing the Enigma. He's going to be playing a jungle Enigma, it looks like. He went that first item, Soul Ring, even. Um, but a jungle Enigma, we've been seeing that offlane Enigma quite a bit, but uh, not so much here. So carry only on a carry. Can't say I'm too surprised by that. He's playing the Terror Blade. I expect big things out of him. And then Mr. Dot, 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 dot. Playing the Meepo. Classic Meepo here. And he's currently setting up bottom. So I don't know what's going to be going on right here. As uh, I don't know if he plans to contest with the Terror Blade. Is this going to be one of those fun, no, uh, this is my lane interactions, and they're just going to pitch at each other the whole time? I'd, why Meepo's not mid is beyond me. I mean, Nature's Prophet. I guess, I don't know, this lineup is just funky all around. I guess you probably, ideally, you probably should have just sent Nature's Prophet top to go with the Doom playing, using the jungle up here, if anything, and then you got Meepo mid with Terror Blade bottom and Enigma jungle. I don't know. Who's even support this game? Is this another game with no actual support? It is, isn't it? <laughs> oh, boy. They did get a ward as Enigma placed one here already. But Anyways, the other side, we have Adele H86 playing the Luna. Uh, Wraith King being played by Unicorn Feces. <laughs> Lion Stole My Bike on the Clockwork. The Johan playing the Spectre. And then Witch Doctor being played by Sanguisordis. And what is going on here in the middle of the lane, actually? Witch Doctor with the double Fairy Fire build that Noel Talisman. Spectre, he's kind of just roaming on nearby. He has a Quelling Blade and a Stout Shield as if he wants to farm, but... He's not doing much farming right now. He's looking to apply some harassment in the middle lane. Maybe go for the kill. That's a that's a maledict death. That should be a kill. He's trying to teleport out in time. Even if he gets that teleport off, it, it's not going to matter. He was ticking down. Level 1 maledict is weak, but that was more than enough damage. The Johan, though, almost gets turn killed. In fact, it's not over just yet. The Treant's chasing. <laughs> if he gets one more auto attack, maybe that actually is a kill, but that will be the first blood in favor of the dire side. So uh, good setup right there. But, again, still curious to see what Spectre's plan is as far as what he's going to be doing this game, because everything else makes sense. Why Witch Doctor is mid instead of the Spectre is uh, it's beyond me, though. <laughs> I don't know if they plan to swap that up, however, as we move on here. Maybe they're also expecting the Meepo mid, which would be understandable, but he's not. What does Meepo end up doing here? Meepo's still level 1. Not the friendliest start for the Meepo right here. Definitely have to keep an eye on that. But decent start for the... Uh, for the Enigma. Seems like he's doing pretty good in the jungle right here, le leading in the creep score. Of course, that could be a little uh, a little lopsided here because of the camps that he has to work with and everything, but overall looking solid. Bottom lane, Spectre finds himself down here now and is apparently going to contest farm with Clockwork, so again, I don't know if uh, they're just bitching about who wants the middle lane. Soul just kind of lost at the idea of Witch Doctor being middle, but to each their own. Kind of stop going on that. I just found out too, because like I play, I actually play a lot of Witch Doctor myself, and he's fantastic support hero. And it just, it, it's like, what, what's up with pubs and just not making sense? Like, well, why, why can't it just make sense when it comes to the lane setups? It's top lane. Oh, they get the turn kill on a Luna up here. That's just Doom. I say they, but it's just Doom actually. Looks like he got the the war stomp though from the Centaur. And that allows him to take credit for the kill. So that's a nice find from the Doom playing a solo offlane. Finding a solo kill onto Luna. And she doesn't have a support, though. So it's understandable that Doom's able to harass her quite heavily and ultimately get a kill. So struggle of a start. Spectre just continuing to roam, meanwhile. Nobody's mid to contest this Witch Doctor. So I guess Witch Doctor is going to have great farm. 
He even has the early bottle here. But now the Johan needs to escape. And he's going to do just that. Meepo cannot connect with the Earthbind. That's an Arcane Rune for a little bit of value there. But, I, I what again, what has Meepo been doing? Has he just kind of been jungling as well with the Enigma in the jungle? God, so they're essentially like running three junglers here on the Radiant side. As Doom's also been doing a little bit at the top lane. But now it's Spectre's turn to rotate to the top. He's going to pick up that four-minute bounty rune. Nice steal right there. As Doom was, uh, there's nothing more frustrating, especially as something like an off lane here where you go to just pick up that bounty rune and be like, all right, well, at least we get a little bit of farm here. And then somebody just snatches it right as you're getting there. Damn it. He just wasted all that time walking over there. Only to see it get picked up. That's why I personally kind of like oh, to just have a good. vision on that on my own bounty rune of sorts. Just so you can see if that does happen. So you don't waste your time going over. Middle lane, they want to set up once again. Another rocket damage coming in. Ooh, if Witch Doctor can get in range for a cask. Now, it's on cooldown, actually, so he did get level 3 Maledict, though. So, I mean, this is for sure a kill if he gets that cask off. I'm intrigued to see, though, a farmed Witch Doctor and how he does. I mean, he has potential to be really scary as far as the skill potential, of course, getting some nice levels. Right, it's just a matter of time before this... Nature's Prophet gets killed. So I'm, I'm keeping the screen on him for, for good reason, but... Oh, I thought that was going to be it. Yeah, Nature's Prophet kind of curious, too, with the cask bouncing around with the treants. He's going to throw it out right here because Meeple's coming over the g gank. Nice Earthbind. Oh, Nature's Prophet going to go TP out, though. Well played by him. But now Meeple's caught the Maledict. One more tick will do it. That's a kill. And boom goes the Dynamite, so... Meepo trying to set up a gank in the middle lane. Ends up costing him his own life. And Nature's Prophet at least made its way out with the uh, with the teleport. So well played there. Spectre, he needs to get out. No stun, though, from Enigma. Looks like he already used it. <coughs> so he'll be successful with that. How's the bottom lane going? Terrorblade, 17-9. Clockwork, 13-3. So Terrorblade's managing all right here. It's nothing fantastic. I mean, the fact that he's only 17 and 90 compared to Luna at the top lane is 23 and 6, and she's died once even. So, yeah, not the greatest farm here for Terrorblade, even despite being a 1 versus 1, but Clockwork's been doing a solid job. Spamming harassment with those rocket flares, level 3 now. So that's been annoying to go up against. Enigma has a Blink Dagger queued up ASAP, so he's... Trying to get that value, that blink dagger. The thing with that, though, unless you make a play with it right away, that's so that's that's kind of a risky investment. Because yes, it can potentially be really good and game changing, but it's also not easy to set up the kills with it ASAP. Doom, the top lane, he's in a little bit of trouble. He took over the Cloakar actually, so has some magic resistance, but not going to matter. He threw the Doom onto Luna, but not nearly enough of a threat, even despite. Nature's Prophet coming in, and look at that. Terra Blade's dead as well as Witch Doctor comes in. That level 4 Maledict doing so much work this early on in the game especially. So, yeah, the, the whole mid-Witch Doctor with a roaming specter is kind of working, surprisingly enough. Surprisingly enough, it's actually kind of working. And it goes back to the idea of, I mean, Witch Doctor as a mid is not a horrible option. It's just he's just better value, ideally, in that support role. But you know what? If you get a snowball like this, level 4 Maledict ASAP, he has that Death War now. I mean, he has a free kill on anyone in this game. As long as he can catch up. Meepo, meanwhile, is living the woes of leeching experience off of Terra Blade and jungling Radiant's somewhat. Tower is under attack. He does have his second Meepo here, at least. Messing top. Top lane, Nature's Prophet has found himself up here. So middle lane has almost been abandoned, it feels like, <laughs> by this Radiant side. That Witch Doctor, he's even more free farm for him. He's got the Arcane Buttes queued up. He went that bottle early on. NP picks up the Power Treads as well. Top lane, though, Doom. So with that Cloak Aura. So not the most offensive tool to be using right here. He's just going to go in with a auto attack of the Infernal Blade, and that's that. He did max out Devour first, so he's really maxed out on this idea of farming earlier on with the Devour ability.
uh, that makes his combat, his fighting early on, a little little weak. Only level one Inferno Blade, and we saw right there. Luna wasn't really too worried about the damage coming out. Bottom lane, they're pinging it. They want to dive this Clockwork, it looks like. Nature's Prophet has a haste rune. Can he get the trap off? Yes, he can. No cogs yet from Clockwork. That's a little interesting. Oh, but he missed the ensnare right there, and now comes the Witch Doctor. Throws out that Maledict, catches Nature's Prophet. I don't know if it's going to be a kill, actually. That's a couple more ticks. Oh, I think it is. This last tick should do it. Oh, no. <laughs> That's a level four Maledict, baby. So, yeah, no cogs on Clockwork. Not needed right there. As I see that, though, he's in trouble. He needs to pop this Shrine ASAP. He'll get it off as the minion army is here, man, between the Treants and the Eidolons. There's a Doom activated, but is that the best choice? He just popped the Shrine, and now Doom wants to chase, but... Without any damage applied to the Clockwork, he's more than fine. That's a waste of an ultimate right there. That's a long cooldown that you're using. That does not result in a kill. So now the 6-1 lead in favor of the Dire side. And how about Wraith King topping the charts, by the way? Haven't even mentioned him once yet other than the introduction. He's just been freely jungling. He almost has his armlet finished. And you know what? I'm actually so happy to see him not just rushing a Radiance right here. Although, honestly, I expected it, and with the way he's free farming, that could have maybe just been the decent choice in the end, but... Um, I like to see him getting the items that are going to allow him to be more involved earlier in this game, because with the momentum that they have, and they're going up against a very, very greedy lineup on the other side, you do not want to let them have 50 minutes in this game or so just to farm. So, yeah, get, that, get the armlet, become aggressive with the team early on, and... This really kind of set the, the the tempo and prevent them from getting a chance. So this Enigma, again, he rushed the Blink Dagger. And this is what I'm talking about, though. You, you get the item like a Blink Dagger, it's like, great. But if you don't get a big black hole with it or the big stun set up for uh, one or two kills as a result of having it, then is it really giving you much? It, it's, a, it's giving him nothing. I mean, it, obviously the obvious Radiant's is that it provides no stats. It's just attack. the mobility and the surprise gotcha potential. But... I mean, if they kill Witch Doctor, it'll be a nice kill. So it's, often, it's rare to say, but he is 301-1, and he's almost level 10, actually, the highest level in the game. But he's not even going to push. Witch Doctor plan is smart. They don't even have vision over there. Just Radiant's simply figures that something's up. And now Enigma's even going to show Radiant's himself having the Blink Dagger. So there goes the surprise factor as, what was this? Uh, yeah. the hell are they doing so deep? The Johan, he's <laughs> going a little too deep right there. Almost killed Meepo, to be fair, but... That's beyond a uh, tier two tower. He ends up getting turned on. So good job by the Meepo. At least he's finding again some kind of farm. Has that ring of facilities Dyer's now to go with the power treads. Bottom lane. Attack. Nature's Prophet Dyer's and Enigma. They got their minion army of the Treants and the Eidolons, and it's enough to push this bottom tower in pretty easily. And now they're going for the secondary tower. <laughs> but now here comes the response. Witch Doctor. Oh, he gets a stun off that teleport. Not going to happen nearly in time to death with a black goal to cancel, but it's immediately counter canceled by the hook shot. And Yules to live is Yules to die or something. He goes down right there. Top lane, the chase is on. The Wraith King's beginning to die in. He has his ultimate, though. Reincarnation ready to go. Scorch Earth. Nice hero blocking. There's the ensnare of the Earth. Bind going to lock him down. So, worst case or best case, he's just going to die once here. They kill him again. No TP's coming in. There's the Arlet toggle, though, so he is beefy, man. Doom is activated. Where's the TP's? I'd be so frustrated at my team right now. To be fair, it looks like they're all on cooldown. Although Witch Doctor has his, but he ain't jumping into this trap. So they do eventually kill him. I mean, everything was used right there, so I guess not the worst thing ever <laughs> if you're Wraith King, but they committed a lot. Now the Reincarnation is on cooldown for a good 200 more seconds here. And this should be a top tower push. Meanwhile, though, middle lane. Looks like Enigma gets picked off right there. Spectre able to help get the go right there with a special Dyer's dagger. I guess this witch, a witch doctor did plenty of the damage, Dyer's but Johan happened to get the last hit. And Johan is building a mech. All right, love to see it. <laughs> Support Spectre is real. And you know what? It's, it's, it's doing work so far, so I, I can't really be too critical of it. Got to give credit to, uh, to the Johan here. Making this uh, making this work, albeit odd, being on what the heroes are of this game, but <laughs> making it work. And this is allowing Witch Doctor to get some very nice farm, and he's going first Maybe item ags actually. So that death we're going to be that much more effective, more the AOE style on multiple heroes. My guess he's going to follow that up with something like a BKB. 
just so he can freely channel it. Well, that's, that's a ways down the line. But again, this Enigma, he's only level 7. So one of the main reasons you pick up an Enigma nowadays is because of his flash farm potential and how re you get the early hand of Midas. You know, you get the, the level 15 talent and the 120 gold per minute on top of that. He just becomes an insane farmer for the team. Great pushing presence. But when you go this right away Blink Dagger build and then you don't get kills with it, especially, you're just set so far behind. And I, that Midnight Pulse was awkward. Anyways, hook shot. Nope. Not going to go in, actually. Was that just out of range? I thought that hit, actually, for a second. But that must have just been out of range. So they managed to actually escape right here. God, that was close, though. Terrorblade does have his Dragonlance finish with the Ring of Aquila. So Terrorblade going pretty typical stuff here. As yeah, so, oh, there's a jump from the Enigma. They would love this kill, but out comes the hunt. All of a sudden, distractions. There go the Terrorblade uh, activating the Metamorphosis, but he's down in a little bit of trouble. In the background, though, Doom's able to run down the Witch Doctor, but at what cost for him? Eclipse goes out, unable to see him initially, but they eventually find the Doom, and they get the kill, the Eclipse. That's a big cooldown committed for just the one kill in Doom that's already in a tight spot, but you know what? It worked out right there. Unicorn Feces, meanwhile, on the Wraith King, able to chase down the Nature's Prophet, and there's the Wraith Bull to stun Terrorblade. Gets the kill, the crit coming out. Not really necessary, but it secures the kill, and the turn is real for the Dire side here. So they come out on top. Black Hole was still coming off cooldown here for another eight seconds, unfortunately. Could have been a huge tool that fight. And yeah, just one more note about the Enigma going the Blink Dagger. He's going up against a Clockwork uh, and alone, but you look at everyone on this team just about has a way to stop that Black Hole pretty easily. So another reason why it's just maybe not the best pickup. Luna, though, Doom's activated on him, but that Death War doing plenty of damage. Meepo goes down, Doom, that Maledict, that's going to take him down, and he gets the kill on a Nature's Prophet throughout. So Wish Doctor only got two technically, but he might as well be credit for all three. Now they do kill Luna in the background. The Doom effect lasts long enough to get the kill. Here comes a push, however, from the dire side. You see Terra Blade just going to send in a distraction right there of a flank. Going to pop that reflection, but now this middle tier two tower heavily pushed in. Reincarnation is up in about 15 seconds here for Wraith King, so he's not too worried about uh, committing so much right here. Can the Radiant side defend against a pretty weak defending team? Overall, this is a very greedy side. They want they want to be farming here. And speaking of that, Shadow Blade has been finished on Doom. He goes face boost into Shadow Blade, so a very aggressive build. And I'm actually surprised he went the 250 health talent, considering he maxed out Devour first. Figured he was definitely going to be greedy with that, but no, he wanted to tank up a little bit. What about Witch Doctor? Oh, he 25% XP again. That's nice, especially when he's playing more of a core here. He's going to be open on it, actually, Doom. <laughs> Doesn't have his ulti. If he has his ulti there, that's a free kill. Blessings but upon instead, Witch Doctor will just walk away and almost has the Axe finish now. Spectre, Buckler finish, the Mechanism, 900 more gold. It'll have that for the team. Meanwhile, Nature's Prophet ports in, go for the tower kill. He'll get it. Spectre, he seems a little bit lost right here. He's going to get caught actually by the trees. He pops a haunt and he gets out. Well played. He actually escapes over here on a Terror Blade. And he's going to TP on out. <laughs> Very good escape on the part of Spectre. And the uh, Radiant side almost seems lost now as far as what they want to do. And Enigma is going to Necronomicon. What? A first item blink, no boots into Necronomicon. Uh, I'll just leave my analysis at that. Uh. Vlad's being finished on Meepo. Again, uh, Power Treads Vlad's, honestly, it's not too shabby considering how this game has been so awful for him. He did not have a place. He was not mid. He was basically second-tier jungling slash supporting almost. <laughs> Welcome to pub games. In fact, I'm also looking at the chart over here now, and, and I thought I might have had it sorted differently for a second, but no, this is the actual sort mid. The top four farmers all belong on the dire side here in this game. And, yeah, about a 7,500 net worth lead. Over 10,000 experience lead right now. Looking pretty good for the dire side. <coughs> Sorry there. I like the adaptation, though. You might as well be useful for your team. So the Johan here on Spectre, get in that mech. You got the blade mill on Clockwork. Wraith King has that Maelstrom finish, the Mjolnir. Going to be next in line. 2,000 gold for that uh, Hyperstone here. 
Luna, how has she been doing? There we go. She just finished her Dragon Land. She did choose to get the Helm of the Dominator with the Ring of Aquila, so she's getting a lot of build up here. Okay, farm, 6,700 net worth. Top lane. I apologize, missing kills, man. Gets a kill on a clockwork, though. Spectre's nearby. Doesn't have Haunt up for another 25 seconds, so if he gets found right here, could be dangerous. Although he does have his dagger. Help him escape if need be. Witch Doctor Axe has been finished. He's going to be going the Glimmer Cape, actually, so ideally that will allow him to channel more effectively. But, yeah, now he's the, the Axe, which will bounce between targets now as a result of that uh, Death Ward being placed. Metamorphosis going up from Terrorblade. It wants to push his tower. But, oh, they need to fall back. The Eclipse going out. Not the grid. It's the Eclipse. There's just so many targets to hit. The Haunt activated as well by the Oan. If anything, Chaos being caused. And look at that Death War, dude. Plenty of spread damage. Gets a couple of kills with it. And Terrorblade, he's going to be cut down in the background. Can't say I'm too surprised that fight went so well for the Dire right there. Well, it didn't seem like the Radiant had a chance going into that fight especially. And... I mean, again, the Eclipse is really weak this game. We did see it right there. It's, there's just so many minions oh, and with the reflections and everything. Uh, there's so many targets, but it's really that uh, that Death War. The spread, it only prioritizes heroes themselves, so that's nice. And then that mixed with, obviously, some single target presence of the Wraith King and the Spectre kind of focusing down specific targets. It's going to be so chaotic to stop. And this is uh, the Radiant side once again. Their lineup in general is just such a greedy lineup. They need farm on um, nearly every hero wants early farm, especially, let alone throughout the whole game. And <laughs> there's only so much on the map, of course, that you can do. In fact, Enigma's going to get caught here. That's a free kill. Doom, I would not open if I were you. He's thinking about it, though. He will open in the background. Now he's in trouble. Wraith King may end up going down right here. Nice toggle right there of the armlet. Throws out the blast. Cogs, unfortunately, do not trap him, though. Unicorn Feces doing a hell of a job with that armlet toggle. He barely stays alive. Oh, NP will finish him off, though. Nice bounce of the Wrath of Nature right there. But he comes back up with the Reincarnation, and there's the Tower Push. Oh, they could do Roshan here if they really wanted to. You can see that Wraith King, 10,000 plus net worth. He has a full-on Mjolnir finished. To go with that armlet now on the Power Treads. For the treasury. Okay, see what he gets for next as uh, looking at his talent choices. 15 damage and a 50 Wraithfire Blast DPS. Interesting. Wow, that is quite the increase then. Jeez. Dyer's middle tower is under attack. I assume that's 50 on top of 65. Is this one of those that doesn't update? Because there's no way it's just 15 at level 4, right? So... Yeah, it's 50 on top of 65, I'd assume. And yeah, that, that is quite a bit, though, as far as, as far as an increase goes. Just delivering a couple of TPs. Split push, though, that's where it's definitely real here on the Radiant side. That That is an advantage they have with all the minions, the Terror Blade on top of that. Haunt activated. Going to try to run down the Enigma right here. The Clockwork going to help with that, and that's an easy kill. The Dire Courier is picked off, meanwhile. Doesn't look like anything was on it, but it seems like Doom may have... Snipe that one out. So going to be quite the annoyance here, but Spectre has the mech finished. <coughs> and working on a pipe now. And that's the other thing with Spectre, especially being ran as a support. What the fuck? <laughs> Why is he in there? What is this Nature's Prophet doing? Anyways. Um, that's the thing with Spectre, though. Being a support, he's, he's, if anything, he's causing chaos in these fights. When he pops that haunt... It may not be the most effective damage-wise because there's no radiance or anything like that, but it's just it's so chaos, right? That they have to they have to find the right target. But so many minions on the map, and Wraith King's in trouble. If he dies, he's staying dead. Remember, no reincarnate black hole. And only catches the one target on a witch doctor. It's going to be a full duration, it looks like, because the doom even comes out, so they will kill witch doctor. And Wraith King also did fall in the background. Meanwhile, Sunder activated on a spectre right there. I don't think that really did a whole lot, though. It seemed like he's only at half life before that. He pops the mech anyways. But it doesn't matter. Meepo poops on in to finish him off. And finally, a one fight in favor of the Radiant side. And I mean, it's it's still such a good spot to be in if you're this if you're the dire, but it's gonna be scary losing fights at 23 and a half minutes in right now because 
Again, if that happens a couple more times, and all of a sudden this Terror Blade has a lot of farm. All of a sudden Meepo starts to be more effective. All of a sudden uh, Nature's Prophet and Doom actually get their next tier of items, and the scaling of this team can get pretty deadly. So yeah, definitely got to be a little worried here if you're the dire side not to give up too much room. Enigma, that Necronomicon, and <laughs> no boot stuff. I, ju I just can't get over this build that <laughs> Oh my gosh, it's just, it's like, okay, I, I guess. <laughs> just more push. Sure, that works. Who needs, who needs boots? And the, it's not even that, it's just, why even get a blink dagger then at that point? Like, if he just rushed into a Necronomicon, I would almost feel better about this build. But <laughs> going the blink dagger just feels so off. With, anyways, I'm not. I'm done. I'm done. He's cast me sometime, man. I do appreciate it. It makes it entertaining. It sure does. But <laughs> it's just. Uh, it makes you respect and appreciate competitive players that much more. I'll say that. Sometimes you kind of scratch your head at their decision making, and then, then you realize what's going on in games like this. <laughs> and you're just like, oh, no, no, they're just fine. Witch Doctor did, did finish the Glimmer Camp. He's level 17, man. You know, that talent's really kicking in. And the fact that he has a minus 40 second, he's almost playing like a, like a, like this whole Lena phase is coming up recently. That's like this heavy magic damage nuke right now. At the same time, he's, he's still Lena. Obviously, he doesn't have that repetition constantly. But I'm with the talent champ kind of looking at the idea of the, the respawn time talent. And, and at level 20, I guess, it's nothing too fascinating. Level 25 talent could be curious. I, I'm guessing he's going to get the Death Ward attack range, especially being more of the offensive Witch Doctor here. As bottom lane, Enigma. No surprise, he's going to die. Nice catch, though. Clockwork actually has his own axe, and that's much better. Clockwork's been doing a great job with his build. Going the Arcane Boots over the Tranquil Boots. That's kind of the one thing I'm maybe looking at, but at the same time, Arcane Boots allowing for more spam ability of the Rocket Flares, perhaps. That's what he's uh, where he's coming from. Luna, not as farmed as I thought she was. Jeez. Well, maybe something it's, something has to be delivered, right? Yeah, okay. Something's being delivered. It is the Yasha. Oh, and even the Ultimate Order. That makes a little more sense. So she's, she's going to have a Manta style here very soon. And Okay, yeah, we're 26 minutes in. Again, she's not the most explosive farm this game, but it is actually looking pretty good here. Wraith King continues to kind of be the leader for the team. Now he's working on a BKB now. Figures he has enough offense and needs a, an ability to help him run around in these fights and stay defensive and like that choice there. He's definitely hitting hard. Doom hiding nearby. Has a War Stomp ready. Actually went Blade Mail himself. Luna meanwhile thinking about poking in. Not everyone's here though. In fact, the top lane there's something going on. Spectre is trying to deal with the Nature's Prophet up here. He's trying to finish his scythe and he is getting there. He has enough for the ultimate army, and he'll just need the voice zone after that. Back to the middle, and they'll port in the black hole. It. It's a couple, actually. It's not going to be stopped. That blink dagger coming into play somewhat right there. They do kill Wraith King. He has that reincarnate, though, but now Lion stole my bike there on Clockwork. He's in trouble. He will go down. Luna gets picked up as well, and all of a sudden, Unicorn Feces, he's left alone. The tree is to trap him with a cox here by a rock and a hard place right there. But he just TPs. Oh, they didn't have a stopper. I guess the, the lack of stuns on this Radiant side is pretty evident now, especially seeing that. Wow, yeah, they did not have many stuns to work with. So, all oh, the black hole, it, it worked kind of. It does get two kills in the end, but they lose two in the process, including Meepo. However, they might get Johan here. Can he maybe Spectral Dagger out? Mech, mech, mech. Thank you. Good job, Johan. He does have a, oh, that's a rest. I thought that was a TP for a second, but that wasn't a Johan. Oh, he goes right next to them, though. He's just trying to quickly juke. He goes back in. He's trying to make the jukes. It's not going to work, though. Even the dust popped right there. I think that was just panic coming out for the Radiant. They really wanted that kill, and, well, they get it. Again, not often you say this. It's just a support specter, but still, nice kill for them. Overall, another fight that well, kind of goes their way. So another case of the Radiant side, if anything, staying alive. And Although I'm looking at the net worth, and the fact that Doom's at top of the net worth for them is not the most appealing thing. However, Nature's Prophet, the Scythe, as mentioned, just about finished. It's going to be some nice lockdown to have. And it goes back to the idea of the split push. And level 15, so see, this is where I think the talent trees is actually bugged with replays from before because this was a 7.04 change for Nature's Prophet where the level 15 talent, he got plus four tree and summoned. 
However, it wasn't picked up here by this Nature's Prophet. Now, with what we've been seeing in this game, you know, maybe that's not too surprising, but at the same time, with the way he's playing, and it, it's just such a strong tool. I would figure you would get it, honestly. So I'm guessing that that's just a visual bug right there, and it just has the talent trees updated even though it's an older replay. I'm pretty sure that's the case. I'm pretty sure this match actually did take place before last week, if I'm not mistaken. So there is that to keep in mind. Unfortunately, it makes things a little confusing, but... Anyways, tower is under you see Spectre another headdress kind of working towards that pipe. He's going to see Enigma back here with an invis rune. So Enigma not as sneaky as he hopes to be. Top lane though, there's that push. And again, this is this is a strength right now, the Radiant side. And good to see them somewhat using it. The hook shot going to be out of range right there, but nice retreat. What is going on here? That was a death ward use. Did he catch anyone? Oh, he got Terrorblade. Oh, man, one more tick. That probably is a kill, but not enough damage in the end to take him out. Seems like he's going for that solo kill. Spectre actually had ultimate. You know what? If Spectre actually ultied as the Terrible was running away, got some damage for that Maledict, I wonder if that could have been a kill. To be fair, his haunt might have just come up. I, I didn't notice if it was up just yet or if it like, just came up cooldown, but hookshot attempt. But, again, with the axe, he can be a little more willing to... Do random hook socks like that. It feels like that's what he's doing there. Necronomicon is level three now, so the pushing army is massive. And him and Nature's Prophet pushing out the bottom lane, but NP has an escape. Enigma, not so much. I guess, well, I guess he does with the blink, and the hookshot just whiffs, and so much for not having an escape. Of course, he had the blink. <laughs> Overlooked that a little bit. And now Nature's Prophet, he's going to teleport away. Obviously, with no hook shot, couldn't stop that right there. Good escapes by both of them. I thought for sure at least one was going to die. Speaking of that, what's the vision like here on the on the dire side? Currently, they do have Spectre with the dust. Good job, Johan. Middle lane, Witch Doctor, he's level 20. He's going to be dove on, though. Doom's activated. Has Glimmer Cape, but obviously can't use it right now. He's going to be stomped, and there's the Metamorphosis auto attacks. To take him out. So, well played there. Nice bounty coming out, and they also catch Spectre, actually. He has the mech, going to pop that, but no Spectral Dagger. He's not getting away from this one. Meanwhile, Rithkin killing Roshan next to him. He will kill Roshan, but that's going to be a quick Aegis use right here. As he's not escaping from this, the evasion's not enough. He goes down. That's the, okay, that's his ult, so his ultimate goes first. I actually wasn't aware of that. And now he comes back up, though. He's going to go after Doom right here. The uh, Eclipse going out, but again, so many targets to attack. And now Luna herself in trouble. She gets out of the trees somehow, actually. I believe the Mantis style actually pushed her out. There's the Aegis used on a Wraith King. And this time he may stay dead for sure, but lost. Lions told my bike on the Clockwork comes in and they just clean them up. Oh, the Witch Doctor Death War doing so much damage all of a sudden. With that Axe effect, that was the God Witch Doctor Death War. It's not often you find yourself saying that. Well, that's exactly what that was. I just I had to th think about that for a second. Like, what the hell just evaporated them? And all of a sudden, Witch Doctor shows up to the party. So, beautiful turn right there. Wraith King ends up surviving. And now here we go with the dire side. Going to try to capitalize. And push in here in the middle lane. And that Death Ward is up at 30 seconds, so... This Doctor's showing the potential of it, especially Radiance if they are clumped like that. Black Hole is still ready, by the way. And they are really clumped right now. If he, could, he can get a Black Hole off here. Oh my god, that's a Black Hole. That's a God Black Hole. Midnight Pulse? Where are you? Where's the Black Hole? Oh, he popped Haunt! He popped Haunt right as he was about to go in. He finally Black Holes, but it stopped immediately. Oh no, I feel for the Enigma right there. I really do. They were so clumped up. That was a god hole opportunity. But the haunt from Spectre stops it. He's dead for 40 seconds. The buybacks are real coming out, both Doom and the Nature's Prophet. You see Terrorblade activated in the center right there to go for the turn kill, stay alive. Johan, he's on the run. Doom chasing him down. Doesn't even know it, though. Roots in the background. Luna went too deep. So they got the melee racks, though. That is a kill, however, onto the Spectre. As Wish Talk to, he's like, nah, we're going to stick around. Pops a Maledict. Blade Nail is going to be used. Uh, Wraith King, though. Does not have his reincarnate. It's down for 20 seconds. He's going to be silenced up. Oh, the instair is missing, though. 
He misses the Nets. Nature's Prophet will get the trap, though. They just have so many ways to trap you in, don't they? And now Clockwork also. Nice job with the hook shot away. <laughs> Looks like he is going to keep his distance. And managed to survive. TPs. Oh, he could have hook shot again. But uh, the TP is fine. And he makes his way out. I see this dip, though. Almost 20,000 net worth lead now. That was after that Roshan Area 5 with the Big Death Ward. Speaking of that, though, Witch Doctor going to be jumped right here. Hexton up. He's CC'd hard. But the Glimmer Cape, the Shrine, and he's fine. Well play there. Manages to live. And oh, good job, actually, with the Blink Dagger that he just got recently. Manages to blink away before he gets caught. But there's a 2 3 tower dead. And actually, yeah, this push is pretty successful right now. They get a buyback out of Wraith King in the back of the traps on a Meepo. Meepo probably in a horrible spot. Trying to just poof it, go for the turn, kill that Blade Mail, doing reflect damage, though. Needs to be careful about that, but Clockwork manages to somehow get out as well. Wraith King is going to be killed off here, here most likely. Does have the ring card at though, or maybe not even. The passive kick, and the double kill picked up by Sanguis Sword is there on the Wraith, on the uh, Witch Doctor, excuse me. It looks like another Death War doing work. And once again, we'll push them back. So, yeah, this Radiant side has to be so careful about clumping up as they continue to do. And now Spectre wants to chase down Nature's Prophet, however, unable to do enough damage. Again, looking at the item build, understandable. He's not necessarily building any damage here. Was relying on teammates to assist. Couldn't get there in time, though, so makes the escape. But, hey, they got the Tier 3 tower, applied a little bit of damage to both the melee and the range racks right there. Despite this game, continuing to look so good for the dire side. I think there is still a fighting chance for the Radiant. With all of the cores that they have. And speaking of that, Terrorblade is Isaiah Scotty being worked on now. When he gets that, then he's actually pretty scary here. Nature's Prophet is just going to go straight into the Silver Edge. Enigma? I don't know. What, what does it even matter? Who's the travel? Well, that's actually a good choice. Doom, what does he get? He got a Shadow Blade. He has 2,600 gold, actually. Get his own Silver Edge here. Feels like Silver Edge would actually be pretty good against this, uh, this Dire side. Especially against the Wraith King, breaking that Mortal Strike. Gonna be a, wouldn't be a bad choice. Spectre finishes the pipe, so... Johan playing the support Spectre, and yeah, the item's definitely reflecting that. And it's a gem queued up. I'm going to assume that the illusions do not take benefit from gems. Let's see anything on this. No, it doesn't, but I assume they do not. I mean, illusions in general do not, so let's see why they'd be any different. Top lane, Nature's Prophet. Oh, Shadow Blade in time, and there's no vision on Wraith King. He's hoping to kill it before he get the Shadow Blade off, unsuccessfully. Luna, BKB, it's down to eight seconds here since he's used it a couple of times now. And that Ice Scotty has been queued up here. How's Meepo been doing? Oh, jeez. Meepo. Meepo, too. This is <laughs> we're having an interesting game here. This is what happens when everyone picks cores. Is you end up having to play support on heroes that you wouldn't expect to. But Meepo essentially is playing just that. He's got the pipe himself to go with the mech, so pretty much the same build as the uh, as the Spectre on the other side, just now noticing that. Yeah, Clockwork actually has a Reaver. Holy crap, he's building into a heart here. Seems like a greedy build. Especially with the lack of support on the team, I feel like more of that support option could be a better choice, but he's going to get a catch here onto one of the Meepos. Spectre, ports in. Here comes the Dell H86. And Luna will help clear out the Meepo. That's Meepo dead for 80 seconds now. Yeah, Nature's Prophet going to pour it out before anyone catches up to him. The Wraith King does have his own BKB finished. Wants to try to get an AC before another fight perhaps takes place. But yeah, they're pushing in the middle, but the top and the bottom are the lanes that they need to be going in here. So it's a good job counter pushing coming out from the Radiant side. <laughs> Just look at these network charts again. The top four all on the dire side, then it goes to the next five being the Radiant. And then it's back here, unfortunately. <laughs> Just at the bottom right there, but you know what? He's doing fine. Radiant Wish Doctor level 25 does get the Death Ward attack range. No surprise there. 
Um, yeah, I'm ready. Wraith King is also 25. He hasn't got anything yet. Interesting. I assume the 20% vampiric are life steals, probably the direction he goes here. But he's going to be locked down now. The black hole is three. Spectre cannot stop that actually. So the eclipse is still going off, doing some damage. But they do get the kill on Wraith King. The reincarnate going to pop him right back up. However, Enigma gets killed. Doom's dead. So the black hole. It was a good one to be fair, but no really follow up for him. And out the top lane, Terror Blades pushing out the tier three tower, and they have to stop that. Clockwork will be on the mission to do so. So they do get the bottom set of racks. And Terrorblade does port back to base, so he tried his best to split push effectively. Unfortunately, not going to get them to fall back in time. And now we have the Dire Sight going for the top lane. Going to go for the Mega Creeps right here. No buyback on either Doom or the Enigma. So they are in trouble. Terrorblade, no Metamorphosis either, so just really they do not have the defensive tools right now to fight. He just pops the BKP on. Wraith King says we're all in for these racks, and they're going to get it. Death Ward with that Maledict. It's terrible. He's not taking too much damage, but he is eventually. Oh, the nice Sunder, though, at the last second. However, he still could. Uh, how's that interaction going to work? Anyway, okay, looks like he's going to live. A Witch Doctor runs away. We'll blink Dagger out, somewhat funky-like, but he actually will escape in the end. And the Glaive's doing a work from Luna. Those are just simply the illusions, actually. But Meeple's like, I'm done with this. He's already DC'd. And that should all but do it in favor of the dire side. So the Radiant, unfortunately, caught in the trap of the five core lineup. Not working out too well for them. Shocker. Wraith King! He doesn't have mana. Oh, no. These are armlet toggles, though, man. He's on top of that. He'll actually stay alive because of that. And now Doom, Silver Edge is going to be used. So he didn't end up getting that item right there. Luna, she may end up falling. Manta-style posh, she goes for the turn kill on Nature's Prophet. Will not get it, but she did plenty of damage in the process. There's a kill to Wraith King, but he got the mana now. They come right back up, and Bitches, he's back. He actually got the no reincarnate mana cost. Okay, that's why. So he was, he was saving that point to see if it was necessary. Oh, the Sunder coming out, but Wraith <laughs> King doesn't care. He's just standing his ground. Okay, maybe he should have, because he actually gets killed in the process. And he's staying dead this time, but Terrorblade also staying dead. Locked down on a Spectre. Might kill the Spectre. As they do, the Death Ward bouncing around meanwhile, but now Witch Doctor in trouble. Oh, can he manage to get out? No, the Doom's on him. He is dead for sure. The Eclipse bouncing around from Luna. Get the Meeple kill. At least he'll get the Meeple kill. He will not get Doom killed on. Now everyone's dead on the dire side. So they do not finish the game just yet. The Tier 4 Towers will stand. And it's all in time now for the Radiant. Got Salt Golem here on Doom. He's been doing his darnest. Keep his team alive. Meepo's level 25. Not that that means much when he's playing support essentially for the team. What does Luna get at 25? 15 to all stats, so one of those boring ones, but still very effective at the same time. Gonna finish in that Eye of Scotty right here. Radiance yeah, you're in that awkward spot as the tier four is doing a falling, but awkward spot if you're the radiant, you want to push out and go for an all in push, but meanwhile your base is basically dead, so kind of have to also defend that. Yeah, random onions, uh, trust me, you've been uh, you've been missing out on some entertaining cast me games here. In <laughs> both the second one I'm doing now. There's been some interesting item choices to say the least. Eth Blade finished on Witch Doctor. Speaking of that, has more nuking presence now. Spectre getting that Necronomicon. Going to start leveling that up here to go with the pipe in the mech. It sure is. An ounce back. It sure is. So this Radiance Ancient taking a little bit of damage right there. Going to start regening though. Again, well, when they go for the death ball push, limits up in 15 seconds. I guess they are going to get an Aegis here. Just because, why not? Butterfly on Wraith King, by the way. Actually, just going to get the Aegis to Clockwork here, who just got a heart recently. <laughs> Seems a little overkill. Probably would have rather given it to the Spectre at that point. But. 
Yeah, interesting interaction. I actually wasn't aware of that with Wraith King, how so the, the reincarnation will will toggle first before the Aegis, and then the Aegis, and then the no actual death, but that makes sense, though. That's definitely better for him. Catches Meepo there with the Wraith Fire Blast, but now the tree is to lock him in place. Does have support nearby, though. Included that Eclipse, that BKP on Luna. They locked down terribly. Could he get up the Sunder? No, he cannot. He's going to stay down. Black Hole that catches one. The Clockwork he actually hooks out onto a creep right there, unfortunately, so it doesn't stop it. But again, the lack of follow up, not really the biggest concern. The Death War just bouncing around in the background. And I think it's officially going to be over now. The Dire will win here. Congratulations. What a game. What a game that was. Support Spectre, a core Witch Doctor, support Meepo. Enigma that would blink dagger first into a Necronomicon. I, uh, that game was almost too much to handle. <laughs> but it was fun. It was fun to cast, and hopefully you guys enjoyed that one as well. Uh, I want to thank you guys for tuning in to yet another cast. Me. Big shout out to the Johan, especially playing that Spectre right there. And uh, props to you. It looks like you actually queued up with the Witch Doctor, so you guys had a plan right there. All right, so I guess that was uh, was your game plan. You know, it, it Witch Doctor, like I said, uh, as a core, he actually has potential as a core mid. It's not like it's horrible. Uh, it's just it was just funky seeing that. <laughs> kind of the roles reversed right there with him and Spectre playing the support. But it worked out, so congratulations to the Dyer again. And a fun one at that. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this cast me. Thanks again to, to the Johan for this one. And... If you don't know what Cast Me is, well, watch this commercial and enjoy. Check it out, guys. Hey, guys. Breaky CPK here, and I'm excited to announce my new service I'm offering called Cast Me. Have you ever wanted to have a hype caster cast one of your games, however, haven't had the opportunity? Or how about you were just looking for ways to get your team more exposure with a professional feeling broadcast to help? Well, now is your chance, as I will cast a select match of yours, either replay or live, for each of the following games. Dota 2. Possibly give me, but of course, that's going to be wearing off. There's one Ravage. Remember, he has a second one to still use. Star Spear flies back in the background. They catch Sven actually at Half-Life. Sven is going to drop right there. The Sunder not even used, actually, by Monkeys Forever here. On the Terra by that Metamorphosis. They do kill the Melee Max, but at what cost there? CS go. Peaking. Flame is down. Right on top of him. He jumped on top. Twist goes down. Lekro gets that kill on a Weber, but Lekro will fall to toss in. And, of course, Han. Devil yeah, jump on a behemoth. The shockwave still goes off on the eruption, but he's still alive. Earth Shatter, meanwhile, is up from Parallax. He does get caught in the Arcane Vortex, though, from Moira. Andromeda will go down. You do see Oki. For prices and more information, just check out the website, thegoodgeekwife.com, and go to the Breaky CPK Cast Me page, or just click on the link provided.